Malady, puisque nos deux miraculos permettent de faire un vœu, pourquoi ne pas en faire un nous-mêmes It's going savage. Ya llegamos. Y esto es... Al Freli. This episode begins with Alia catching up on all of Marinette's love gossip. Qu'est-ce que tu racontes Comment ça t'es amoureuse de Chat Noir And like all the fandom, she's also surprised by the sudden change in Marie's heart. Fortunately, this episode tells us more about Marinette's feelings. First, right now, she's completely in love with Kat, seeing all the positive aspects of the kitty. That he's cute, handsome, competent and cool. Hey, she's almost describing Kat Walker. And if that wasn't enough, the series blesses off with this Mary Shad scene. However, this does not mean that she no longer loves Adrian, because when she runs into him, we see her as clumsy as usual. The only thing that has changed is that she avoids being with him for fear of making more mistakes. Actually, Marinette is running away from her feelings, something that both Alia Tu te trouves un nouvel amoureux comme par hasard au moment où Adrien, lui, a l'air de vraiment s'intéresser à toi. Coïncidence Je ne crois pas. Tu serais pas plutôt en train de fuir tes sentiments I'm thinking Porteuse fuit ses vrais sentiments en choisissant un amour impossible avec Chat Noir Confirm for us. Which means that, actually, Marinette does love Adrian, but since that's not convenient for her, she wants to replace him with Cat Noir. Mary thinks she can do this because she sees her love as a decision. She explains to Alia that falling in love with Adrian is not a good idea, but being in love with Cat Noir is, as if she could choose who to be in love with or not, when everyone knows that love doesn't work that way. And this raises a terrifying question for Mary Chat fans. How honest is Marinette's love for Cat Noir? On the flip side, we have Adrian, who is hopelessly in love with Marinette. Kagami's drawing, Adrian's drawing. Adrian sees in Marinette a person who always makes him feel better, because she's always able to find the perfect words to comfort him, like she did in Risk and now in this episode. However, this doesn't mean that he doesn't love Ladybug. As he explains to Black, he still loves her, but finally has understood that he can force her to be with him, much like Luca and Kagami's resolution. Adrian is getting much closer to becoming a king just like Luca and Kagami. Making peace with unrequited love and moving on with a new person is a healthier way to deal with your emotions, unlike Marinette, who is just repressing her feelings and letting her insecurities dictate her decisions. And to finish with these lovebirds, in this episode we have seen the new dynamic of the Adrenette. Adrian will take every opportunity to express his feelings to Marinette, whether it's preparing details or writing poems for her. But as soon as he tries, she will sabotage these approaches for fear of making more mistakes. And we'll return to the same thing, just as blind as always. Adrian doesn't notice Marinette's subtle rejections, while she doesn't realize that Adrian is madly in love with her. Now, from here, a lot of information is revealed to us, so let's go in parts. Let's start with the trip first. Here, Gabriel, Emily and Natalie found the butterfly, peacock and the grimoire. For the first time, they show us images of this expedition. We also see thumbnails of Emily next to a car, probably just arriving there, exploring some ruins, and finally in some cold mountains, surely the place where they found the miraculouses. Also, we see that in his youth, Gabriel had several adventures investigating archaeological sites in his search for the miraculouses. However, how did he find out about the existence of the Miraculouses? On the other hand, another curious detail is that it was on this trip that Gabriel and Emily fell in love and also where they broke Natalie's heart. And since Adrian wasn't born yet, the trip had to have happened at least 15 years ago. A bit of Natalie's background is revealed to us. Apparently, she used to be a treasure hunter, which explains the theme of her acumatized form. It seems that Gabriel hired her to get the miraculouses, so of the three, Natalie was the one with most experience in treasure hunting. Also, we see that she has her own safe, where she keeps a cell phone with Emily's recording, a letter, and what appears to be a journal? And while we're at it, let's talk about Emily's recordings. The thumbnails of the videos tell us a little story. We see the beginning and the end of the miraculous trip, then some moments of her life back in Paris and living with her family, like in the forest, having dinner in the garden of the Agres mansion and in the car. And lastly, we see her last days of life. What is interesting here is that she is not in Paris, 
since we see that she's outside the city. This last recording tells us several things about Emily's personality. She had already accepted her fate and didn't agree that Gabriel would look for the Miraculouses to revive her. And second, she cares about her son. That's why she puts Natalie in charge of stopping her husband, because she knows that he's so stubborn that he'll look for the Miraculouses to revive her. Natalie has to because Adrian needs both of them, and Emily trusts that she'll take care of Adrian like he is her own son. From all this, we can deduce that, despite loving the same man, Natalie and Emily were great friends. To the point where Emily entrusted her son to Natalie. Natalie loves Emily and Adrian so much that she even has a photo of them as her phone wallpaper. And later, she feels really bad that she failed to keep her promise to Emily. Now, with Gabriel Agrest, it's quite the opposite. Natalie had been in love with him for years, giving him her unconditional support to the point of using the Pico Miraculous knowing that she would end up like Emily. However, no more. No since Evolution, Natalie saw that Gabriel was more focused on his rivalry with Ladybug than on bringing back Emily, and the only reason she's still in the aggressed mansion is to protect Adrian from his father. But enough of living in the past, let's get back to the present. Here we have this incredible scene. Natalie arrives super worried about her son, and I love that she never misses an opportunity to criticize Gabriel. Gabriel, si vous passiez plus de temps avec votre fils, vous sauriez qu'il préfère ses pancakes nature. Adrien, ne vous forcez pas à manger pour faire plaisir à votre père. Oh. On the other hand, OMG with the cynicism of Gabriel playing as the perfect family, denying that Natalie is upset, preparing pancakes for her and Adrian, and at the end, posing as the best family with his hand on her shoulder and everything. But be careful, because Natalie will not put up with Gabriel's hypocrisy. Here, Gabriel begins to say that he's doing all of this for Adrian's happiness, but it's not true. And I love that Natalie lets him know that. Actually, Adrian just needs his dad to be happy, and Gabriel is aware of that, but he hides behind Adrian to justify his selfish actions. He also does the same with Emily. Natalie tells him that Emily was at peace with the fact that she was going to die and that she didn't want to be revived, but Gabriel says Emily always deserved more than she wanted. Here, Gabriel is saying that he knows what is best for Emily, which is absurd because the only person who can decide that is Emily herself. Actually, what is happening is that Gabriel is putting his selfish desires above Emily's. He can't stand the idea of letting Emily go and he doesn't care what anyone else has to say. He wants to bring her back any way or another. You never revenir Emily and it's time to accept her as she did. No. The idea of losing his wife bothers him so much that he had the recordings where Emily was at peace with her death erased. This is because he cannot bear that Emily contradicted him. Gabriel is just a foolish old man who cowardly disguises his selfish actions as love for his wife and son. Natalie had already given up on getting the Miraculouses, but Gabriel reveals something that changes everything, as it shows that Cat Noir's cataclysm is spreading and slowly killing him. Gabriel's days, as well as Natalie's, are numbered. The wish is no longer just to revive Emily, it's also to heal Gabriel and Natalie. A great writing decision, because it doesn't just create this sense of urgency for Gabriel and Natalie to get the Miraculouses, but also this revelation touches right on Natalie's promise, because Emily said that Adrian needs both, Gabriel and Natalie. And if that wasn't enough, Natalie gets a glimpse of how Adrian's pain would be if he loses both of them by discovering the Natalie is dying the same way his mother did. That's why, in order for Adrian to not become an orphan, she decides to join Gabriel once again to get Ladybug and Cat Noir's Miraculouses. But she will do it her way. She asks him to acclimatize her so she can get the Miraculouses first and make the wish herself, so that Gabriel doesn't ruin things because of his madness. And I love how Natalie takes the initiative telling Gabriel what to do, what powers to give her, and giving herself her billion name. And Natalie wasted no time, because she used three Miraculouses powers plus her Akuma to face our heroes. She even communicated telepathically with Monarch even before he sent the Akuma to her, like a true queen would do. And before Adrian leaves, he sees that Natalie has a ring. Let's remember that this ring apparently is the one with which Gabriel controls Adrian and the main hint to the theory that Adrian is a sentimonster. 
Gabriel gave it to Natalie at the end of season 4 and now it is revealed that she still has it. And seeing how overprotective she is of Adrian, I doubt she's planning on giving him back to Gabriel. Adrian, as the clueless boy he is, believes that the ring is a symbol that Natalie and Gabriel are becoming more attached, when in reality it's the opposite, they were literally fighting right at that moment. And well, we have already seen this in other episodes, but Adrian just wants a family, and it doesn't bother him at all that Gabriel and Natalie became a couple. Even Adrian already considers her as a mom as he goes to ask her for advice on how to confess his romantic feelings to Marinette. And thank god Adrian wasn't planning on proposing to Marinette, at least he's not as cringy as Steven was. And it's in this conversation that Adrian notices that Natalie is experiencing the same thing as her mom. And poor baby, he's reliving his trauma now with his new mom. Later we see that when he opens with Marinette, he talks about being sad and feeling helpless. Fortunately, Mary gives him some very good advice and tells him that the best thing he can do in those situations is to be there for that person, and it's true, because at the end of the episode, Adrian puts that advice into practice, making Natalie feel much better and they even manage to strengthen the relationship. On the other hand, Flag is very worried that the main characters will fall in love because it could mean the end of the world and he goes with Tiki. Here we can see her drawing and, in fact, I was so curious to see Tiki's original drawing that I reconstructed in Photoshop and we can see that it's a galette and also that she draws pretty good too. Tu n'as aucune raison de t'inquiéter, quand ma porteuse est amoureuse elle n'arrive jamais à rien, elle va se mettre à tricoter des bonnets et monter des plans qui n'ont aucune chance d'aboutir. <laughs> Tiki so like, don't worry about her confessing her love. My holder is so dumb that she had tried for four seasons and failed. Ton pouvoir est à moi. Voyage, Megakuma. The portal is a bit unnecessary, isn't it? Poor Kalki. We can see that Natalie can summon the code weapon just to use its power. We also discover that the power of Genesis is totally OP, because it can also recreate the powers of other Miraculouses, something that certain Kwame cannot do. And finally, Gabriel reveals that the most he can resist is using 6 powers at the same time in reference to evolution and how he almost died for spamming his powers. And going back to our lovebirds, this episode makes it clearer how the Lady Noir dynamic will be. Or in this episode, would it be... Mr. Noir? Well, the dynamic of them transform into heroes. First, on Ladybug's side, we see that now she has attitudes and makes somewhat funny comments. Like when she sees Time Tugger and instead of worrying about the mess he is making, she gets excited that she will get to see Cat Noir, something that even Tiki notices. Or when, in the middle of the fight, she stops to ask Cat Noir to the movies, causing her to be paralyzed by Safari. And although, on one hand, it's true that by being in love with Cat Noir, it's easy for her to tell him everything she can with Adrian, at the end of the day, she still makes mistakes for being in love, which is precisely the reason why she doesn't want to be with Adrian. Also, wasn't that the whole reason she rejected Catwalker as a partner in Kuroneko? Oh, Marinette, who understands you? On the flip side, with Cat Noir, we have the complete opposite. Although he panics when Ladybug is paralyzed and says that without her he fails, the truth of the matter is that in this episode he proved the opposite. First, he was incredibly competent when he dodged the lasers while carrying a paralyzed Ladybug, and then he came up with the same plan as Ladybug of exchanging the Miraculouses. And look, that you have to be really good to come up with a plan as Mary Sue like Ladybug would. Now, let's talk about the reverse love square. Here, Ladybug is now the one who spends her time flirting with Cat Noir while he figures out how to beat Yakuma. Ladybug makes comments about how handsome Cat is. Hey, je te défends d'aplatir le beau visage de mon partenaire! <laughs> <laughs> and even makes cat style jokes. Bien joué, Mr. Bug. Tu n'oublies pas quelque chose, Malady? Un bisou d'arbre? Ugh. 
Even Tiki can deal with this amount of cringe. On the other hand, Cat Noir put aside these attitudes and doesn't follow her game. He even attributes Ladybug's behavior to the fact that the Cat Miraculous is influencing her in a weird way, which reminded us a lot of the theory that said that whoever used that Miraculous absorbed Black's personality. We also see how it is now Cat Noir who brings the confusing plans based on the Lucky Charm, and Ladybug is the one who does not understand what the heck is going on. And I love that Cat reminds her for all the times that he has followed her blindly without her explaining anything to him, and asks her to do the same, which Lady gladly accepts because she is in love. I guess that's why Kat blindly trusted her before. On this occasion, instead of using the Lucky Charm directly to prepare some kind of trap to beat Akuma, its purpose was to give Mr. Bug an alibi, since he already knew it was Natalie and therefore deduced that Akuma was in his house. The only thing he needed was an excuse to go there without risking his identity in front of Lady Noir. At one point of the battle, Adrian toys with the idea of using both Miraculouses to make a wish of his own. And if we analyze this episode's characters, we can see that the series explores this motivation in three different ways. First, Gabriel with a negative arc. At first, his motives were understandable, he did it out of love. However, later we discover that actually he is being selfish, since Emily had already resigned herself to dying, but Gabriel did not respect her wishes to rest in peace. This path led him to distance himself from his loved ones, like Adrian, and even putting their lives at risk, like Natalie and Adrian. Also, instead of just talking with Ladybug to explain his situation and trying to resolve things peacefully, he chooses his pride and tries to steal the Miraculouses from her. This quest for absolute power is only corrupting him. Now, with Adrian, we go all the other way, a positive arc. Although for a moment he considers using the Miraculouses and is tempted to succumb to their power, he's going savage. He is not selfish like his dad, cause when Ladybug explains the price to pay for making a wish, thanks to his empathy, he understands the harm it can cause. He has understood that he cannot solve his problems with magic, since it is unfair that other people have to deal with his problems. And the third way is Nathalie's, which is between the previous two. She is like Adrian is motivated by nobler reasons, wanting to get the Miraculouses so that Adrian doesn't stay alone. However, by following the same method as Gabriel, inevitably brings her the same negative consequences, since she also begins to distance herself from her loved ones, which Mr. Box explains to her during their fight. Je n'ai plus rien à perdre, hein? Si, vous pouvez vous perdre, vous perdre ceux que vous aimez et qui vous aiment en retour. Oh. Fortunately, by the end of the episode, Natalie redeems herself because she stops trying to get the Miraculouses and instead spends her time with Adrian. Finally, Marinette and Alia are catching up. Alia asks about Cat Noir and Mary tells her that he is so in love with her that he even hides how much he cares about her. First of all, what? That doesn't make any sense at all. And second of all, it seems that this is another of her classic made-up stories, because instead of accepting that Cat Noir no longer loves her, she goes around throwing those mental gymnastics where, according to her, he still loves her. Marinette, you need to go to therapy. <laughs> 